Here's part two of our interview with Jeff Charbonneau, 2013 National Teacher of the Year. You'll find the link to part one of this interview on our website at readywa.org. Talk about uh, just your travels around the nation and talking to other teachers about uh, Common Core. You know, in, in other states it's uh, more controversial. Uh, some states it's not, like Washington so far. But uh, you know, what, what have you what have you heard from other teachers around the nation uh, regarding Common Core and and their support of it? Most what what I've heard from other teachers is uh, a support for Common Core. Is the the concern that they have is is how it's going to be implemented and, and what what it's going to be used for beyond that that point. And, and that's you know something that that each state needs to decide. You know that that's. The nice part about the Common Core is it's, it's a common set of standards, but then what you do to uh, implement that and how you're going to use that within your classrooms still has some local control to it. And so a lot of our teachers are, are trying to navigate what that means within their own particular school districts. In some places that's going great, in other places they could really use some help. That help, though, is available from hundreds of miles away because other schools and other states are going through the same thing. So unlike having to reinvent the wheel uh, so often when, when schools were, were making changes, we can now look to our neighbors and our neighbors have gotten a whole lot more numerous as, as we've transitioned to the state level. And you, you mentioned it earlier, but uh, you, you, you talk about uh, you, you believe in local control mm -hmm. uh, and you know Common Core, uh, where however it's framed, the, the more accurate it is it's part of a larger education toolbox. So right. talk about that and, and maybe the misnomer that Common Core will solve all the educational <laughs> problems. That's not its intent. The Common Core is not going to solve everything. There's, there's a lot of areas in education that we need to continually work to improve upon. Common Core is going to help with, with some of them, but, but certainly not with all. It's, a, it's definitely a tool in my toolbox. Uh, it's something that's going to help guide my instruction, but at the same time, I need to make sure that I'm, I'm developing appropriate and positive relationships with students. And Common Core doesn't really address that particular aspect of it. There's still an art to teaching as well. And so I need to make sure that I'm using Common Core appropriately to help guide that instruction, not dominate it, but, but guide it. And then I use the rest of my resources to help formulate my actual curriculum. Part of uh, the Ready Washington Coalition and, and the Real Learning for Real Life campaign, we uh, we answer the question a lot about uh, uh, testing assessments, mm -hmm. which which you do too as well. And and you know we we say in, in summer 2015, the first test scores uh, regarding uh, aligned with Common Core will come out. Talk about uh, what parents should know, uh, what students should know, how they should feel about you know uh, these test scores coming out in a couple of years and 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 you know the, the biggest thing for me is as, as you know as a teacher I, we do tests I mean we as a, as a profession we've been doing tests for a long time it's what we do with those tests how we take that information and how we use that information that really defines us as an educational system so so when these new exams come back to us and these new scores come back we need to make sure that we're using them appropriately and that means that we've communicated with our students, we've communicated with our parents, that these are exams that are going to guide us in continuing to improve our instruction. It's not going to be a, a value of, of how much I value a student because they scored X or Y on an exam. This is a, going to be a learning process for all of us. And so if we go into that knowing that our, our scores might be a little bit lower, then we need to be ready to, to deal with that as, as an educational institution. I don't know that we've, we've quite got that plan ironed out just yet, but the best part about being in education right now is that you get to be a part of building that plan. You know, a lot of people will talk about how it's a, it's a rough time to be in education, and I completely disagree. This is a great time to be in education because I see a real potential for us to be able to, to really formulate what education will look like for not only my, my school district, my state, but also the nation for many years to come. So as National Teacher of the Year, you're not going to be technically in the classroom. You're, that doesn't mean you're going to stop teaching. So <laughs> Zilla has to share uh, you with the, with the state of Washington, and then we have to share you with the nation, and then even the, the, your travels around the world this year as National Teacher of the Year. Talk about uh, that, how you feel about maybe not being in the classroom all year, but but your experiences, uh... you, you know, there, there certainly is a little bit of guilt uh, going on, not going back into the classroom this year. Um, but I, I'm definitely still teaching. Uh, my, my students are just a little bit older, I say now. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching a lot of uh, other teachers and learning an awful lot from them too. Because I'll tell you what, I certainly don't have all the answers in education. You know, there's there's a lot of other educators out there that are doing some phenomenal things. That I'm I'm learning uh, from them about. 
So, so my role this year is to tour the United States, talk with a lot of folks. I will be heading to both China and Japan uh, during the course of this year. And, and the goal is to share what I know is true in Zilla, what's true in Washington, what's true in the nation, but also learn from, uh, from those places as well. There's so many great opportunities for us to continue to improve. Doesn't mean that we're not doing a great job already. You know, there's some things that are going absolutely right in our state, some things that we're doing phenomenally well. And, and really, I see that when I tour around the United States, everybody keeps asking me, wow, what are you guys doing in Washington? Because we hear such great things coming out of there. Washington State is actually held in really high regard around the United States. So as we're having our, our you know, debates on how we should move forward this way or that, just always remember, we're doing a pretty darn good job already. We're just working really hard to continue to improve. That's great. Well, we'll wrap it up uh, real quick. And, and parents are and, and students are going to hear the word Common Core a lot this year mm -hmm. and the next couple of years in the classroom. So, you know, if you had 20, 30 seconds to explain it to a parent who comes up to you and said, what, what is Common Core? I mean, why, why do I have to worry about this? How does it affect my child? What, what, what would you say to them? Common Core, the, the general idea behind it for me is that it's the destination. This is where I need to make sure my students get to what they should be able to know and be able to do. The path to getting my students there is still up to the individual teachers and the individual schools. So it's not the journey of education, it's the destination where we want to get students to. We have great local control over how to get there. The last thing I would say to a parent is, do me a favor and go read them. I want you to see what the Common Core actually are. It's really not that long of a document in the grand scheme of things, so go take a look. Take the time to become an informed citizen and know what your child's going to be expected to know. Yeah, well, Jeff, I uh, appreciate your time. Uh, we'll be following your travels around the U.S. and the world. We hope you uh, are able to come back to Washington as much as you can this year, and uh, we'll be following you. So good luck out there. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.